Back in the 80s, Brooklyn crew started boosting from necessity. But when the legendary low lives took the stolen streetwear and turned it into a fashion movement, nobody saw that coming. And just a few years later, the same brands that were being boosted by New York City's toughest and poorest were now marketing their top clothing lines to the communities of color they once ignored. I brought these out, you know what I'm saying? Because I know a man of his dexterity. Yeah, we out here doing it. Once he bring these out, yeah, I know it's serious. That's a money I getting out like and, and definitely a girl mech. This is the mecca right here, you know what I'm saying? Brownsville, East New York, basically Brooklyn. How they say my hat keeps on making it. Brooklyn keeps on taking it. Being a native Brooklynite, I remember when the lowlifes hit the streets. Y'all had me terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wear my polo in the, in, the, in the daytime. How did the lowlifes come to be? All right, well, when we was coming up, it was about a lot of people broke. They needed money. Mm. So we start taking money. We start breaking in stores. We start breaking jewelry store windows. We start snatching money bags. Then it was a competition. Then I start going to name brand clothes. We went from AJ Lester on up. We went from Delancey Street on up. We went. God State Plaza, Liverston, Woodbridge, Rockville Center, Shaw Hills, Little Brick, Commons Mall, Somerville, Upper Derby, Mamas County, Lancaster, Paramus, Willow Brook. Hmm. We're gonna murder all the malls. Talk about it. So we're coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right. And then we start getting famous in the hood as cats who, oh, they getting money. We started getting money and dudes was doing what they was doing. They started getting on egotistical thing because it's like, yo, I got this sweater, I got this. You know what I'm saying? Even though we all was out for money. We're all in poverty. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? But you wear $500 sneakers mm. or whatever the case may be, a $500 sweater. Mm. And we selling everything half price new. Mm. But we was taking chances. Whether it was our insecurities or we couldn't get no girlfriend and we knew we had to be fly to get on. <laughs> you can't get no respect if you was a bum in the street. We never did no gang <laughs> We was capitalists. How you gonna call me a gang member when I got too much talent? To the crib in low lifes, we call our cribs the low mansions. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna show you my low mansion right now. The low is always everywhere, so this is like my low museum. Got the beach chair. Wait, what's that down there? Oh, that's the low Barbie doll. It's, Wait. A, real, it's a real Barbie doll, but she's polo down. See, what people don't realize is polo is not just a brand, it's, it's a, a lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah. The lifestyle of the American dream. Thurston Howell III flipped Ralph Lauren's American dream into his own. The legendary polo booster is now a genuine polo model, embraced by Ralph himself for his impact on the culture. You know what low life is famous for is boosting. You know, there are a lot of legendary boosters who had all kind of methods and, you know, who created how to do it. There was also ways where you take it off your back. They were getting shot for it, stabbed, robbed, stomped out, you know, so, you could either trade. You got 10 of the same shirts, I got 10 of these same shirts. Me and you would trade. You know, there was many different methods of going about getting the clothes. But the key was to try to get it before anybody else. But one thing people don't know, the low life style and culture did not start with polo. In the early 80s, we was all wearing Kangos, right? But then three years later, you get laughed at for wearing it. The same thing happened with gazelles. Gazelle, I, you know, in my projects, I seen many dudes with bullets in them, some people still crippled because they got fuck shot fuck for their gazelles, gazelles in the early 80s and all that. Yes, sir. Then early 90s, they laugh at you if you was wearing gazelles. So I seen many brands do that. But by 86 and on, the polo started hitting heavy, you know? And it stuck. And it stuck. It became, yeah. as far as hip hop, the only brand that never went out of style. <laughs> What does low life mean for you? How, how does it, how do, how do you represent the culture now? We finally got to solidify fashion as the fifth element. The graffiti, breakdancing, MCing, DJing. Those are considered the four elements. And now they include in fashion. I'm gonna tell you the craziest. Fashion was the first, first. element. And they never say that. Before you was a DJ, you you trying to look like a DJ. Before you was an MC, you wanted to dress like an MC. You wanted to have the attitude and the look before you jumped on. So fashion was the first. The cultural force of low lifestyle changed hip hop. Then hip hop changed fashion. Now you have these high end brands who are designing clothes based on the style of its most famous boosters. Call it cultural appropriation. 
call it boosted. You can call it what you want. But fashion brands are stealing style from the same people who stole their clothes. And, and it's hilarious. But rest assured, no matter what fashion brands do, a hustler is going to always find a way to make a dollar.